Thailand is famous for plenty of cool stuff, and among them are floating markets. This is Ampawa Evening Floating Market, a mesmerizing maze of canals and narrow alleyways. But where are all the floating shops and restaurants? Did they all sink? Find the shocking truth that will change your life forever in this amazing... Okay, I got a bit carried away there. My point is, this video will change your expectations before you visit Ampawa Floating Market. Today I'm going to take you through everything you need to know about Ampawa Floating Market. First I'm going to tell you how to get there and talk a little bit around accommodation. Then we're going to walk through the market at daytime and I'll talk a bit about all the cool stuff you can buy at this place. We'll then go for a very cool little boat trip waiting for the night after which we're going to walk through the market again and soak up the atmosphere during night time. Ampawa Floating Market lies a quick two hour drive from Bangkok. You can catch a bus or a van from Bangkok, but I recommend going there by car because there are some exciting stops along the way, like these salt fields. But that's for another video. Do not make it a day trip. Stay for at least one night. The best way to soak up the atmosphere of the market is to stay in a hotel or a guest house next to the canal. I spent one night in a guest house called Room Quest, located smack bang in the middle of the market. Room Quest is quaint and small. There are seemingly only three rooms, all on the second floor. The rooms are small but elegant and offer a view directly onto the canal, only a couple of meters away from my room. There is a bathtub if that's something you enjoy in 30 degrees Celsius, 90 degree Fahrenheit. The internet connection is totally dysfunctional and I would recommend eating your breakfast somewhere else. Considering the price, however, I would gladly stay here again. Let's go and see the market! What looks like large green oranges are called pomelo. Pomelo is the largest of the citrus fruits and tastes like a blend of an orange and a grapefruit. I am partially pomelo addicted and every time I'm in Thailand I stuff myself with them as much as I reasonably can. Peeling a pomelo can be somewhat challenging and I would recommend watching his short YouTube video on how to peel it before engage in pomelo peeling. Remember, pomelo is best served cold. What you see in front of you here is coconut sugar, which comes from the sap of the coconut palm tree. You make coconut sugar by mixing the sap with water, boiling it into a syrup, and then eventually letting it dry and crystallize. 
coconut sugar is almost identical to regular table sugar in terms of nutrients and calories, but because coconut sugar is less processed and therefore more, in quotation mark, natural, some people feel it's better. But it's, it's sugar. This is a fish. Steamed Thai mackerel, to be exact. Not that I would know it was a mackerel. Personally, I can barely distinguish a salmon from a whale. Thais often refer to Thai mackerel as the fish of the nation and use it in a wide variety of dishes. Thai mackerel has become quite expensive over the years because of its popularity and because there is literally not plenty of fish in the sea. What you see in front of you here is the process of making kite crackers. These kind of crackers are a traditional Thai snack made from a mix of rice, honey, salt, beeswax and coconut oil. They taste like a thin, sweet cracker, unsurprisingly considering the, the ingredients, really. After a culinary adventure on land, it's time to embark on a sea voyage. All along the canal, you will find these boats and their drivers eager to take you on an excursion into the realm of Poseidon. Funny side note, if you are in Bangkok, an excursion into the realm of Poseidon is a very different type of trip. Look it up. Just don't use your work computer when you look it up. Back to the story. You can join a larger group on a bigger boat or go with just a few people on a smaller boat. The ride is a peaceful respite after the hustle and bustle of the market and a relaxed way to explore the sights. Let's take a few minutes and enjoy the ride. The sun is setting, and as the name Evening Floating Market implies, the river is about to teem with floating shops and restaurants. But where are they? Along the river, I could find none but a single restaurant selling food from two boats. These rivers used to be packed with floating shops, which all, it appears, have disappeared. The decline is obvious not only in the waters, but also on land, where many shops have closed or lie deserted. What happened? Covid hit the tourism industry hard in Thailand, a country particularly dependent on travelers from abroad. However, Covid is an unlikely culprit in the mystery of the disappearing boats. Speaking to some locals, I learned that the Ampawa floating market teemed with life about one year ago, with the narrow alleyways and riverside walkways bursting with tourists. This of course rules out Covid as an explanation. So if the pandemic isn't a suspect, what is? Ironically. 
It appears the reason for the market's decline lies in its popularity. The market is also a popular destination for Thai tourists, largely due to its authenticity. The likely culprit for the market's decline lies in touristification and a subsequent loss of authenticity. Too many shops started catering to tourists from abroad and begun selling the usual items available in any regular market across Thailand. Together with the loss of authenticity, Ampawa floating market also lost their most important customer, local Thai tourists. The Ampawa floating market sunk because the local Thai tourists were no longer interested in paying the place a visit. This story of course begs the question, is Ampawa floating market still worth a visit? Somewhat ironically, there are two clear benefits from the lack of other visitors. First, the place is less crowded and it's much easier to move around. A second benefit is accommodation. The place I stayed at normally required a booking up to three months in advance. I was now able to get this room only one week before my stay. On the other hand, and as you have seen in this video, Ampawa is decidedly less lively compared to how it used to be. Though this is not to say that there is nothing to do. As this video shows, there is undoubtedly plenty to experience for a one night stay. You now know what to expect. Use that to make up your own mind whether Ampawa is worth a visit or not. There is one interesting fact I have not yet mentioned. Quite literally right next to Ampawa floating market, you will find the King Rama II Memorial Park. This park hosts a fascinating collection of traditional Thai buildings and an extensive historical museum. If the market is not enough for you, you can spend plenty of time in this park. I am going to make a separate video about King Rama II Memorial Park, so slam that subscribe button to stay in the loop. My name is PK, a Norwegian living both in Oslo, Norway and Bangkok, Thailand. If you have enjoyed what you saw here today, please like, share and subscribe. It helps tremendously. If you passionately despised every second of this video, make sure to share it with all your friends to make sure they will never watch it.